good afternoon so uh decided real quick to put together a little a little video <clears throat> it's gonna be short sweet but i was cleaning up some stuff had an idea something i thought some of you might like uh about decoys we talk about a type of decoys and a little bit about rigging some decoys and if we can go in, into some more depth on any of them if anybody wants to hear it so uh i'm gonna go ahead and get this camera put in a stand so i can use my hands and we'll cover it all right <clears throat> so first these decoys flambeau gunning series decoy i stumbled across those probably last year uh, i think they were on sale i'm not sure where i got them from it's online could have been rogers or max don't know I got a curved belly. It's supposed to mimic more of the old style solid wood decoys. And as you can see, a very small keel and it's weighted to the back. Now, that small keel and the way it's weighted is supposed to let them ride differently in the water. Well, I feel like it works. I know, took these decoys on a, on a draw hunt last year in a pond so there's no current but there was some wind and definitely these decoys while they look they look good to me plenty good enough to fool a duck they might not be quite as realistic as say an avian x or something but uh boy did they move on the water so before I bought them, I did try to do a little research, and there was like one video I could find of these these decoys. And I'll try when I have time. Um, we'll be spending a lot of time at work coming up, but I will try when the weather gets a little prettier and I have some time to get these on the water and see if we can get a little breeze on them and give you an idea of what those they'll do. I gotta say, they might not be perfect, but they're, they're they're plenty good to fool a duck. But I'll let you see what these bad boys will do with a little breeze on them. To me, it makes makes quite a difference. And I know personally, you know, I like the old older flambeau stuff was was decent. Then they kind of went through a period. I don't remember what they called it, but there was a period where they were they looked like cartoons and. Uh, that kind of turned me off, especially, you know, right after that, it was the, this period of ultra realistic decoys that we're living in now. So anyway, but these to me look pretty good. They really, they work good on the water. Um, the weight appears to be like a zinc plated steel or something. They've been in salt water and they're not rusted, but they don't stay in salt water, so I'm sure they will eventually rust. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was I mostly hunt on the coast of South Carolina. And basically, if you don't hunt on the coast, then uh, there's a lot of challenges that you've not had to deal with. So here, you know, sometimes we'll be dropping a decoy anywhere from a foot of water to 20 or 25 feet of water sometimes and when I say a current our tide changes might be up to six feet you know they're usually around the four foot range but you get you get a falling tide man they can sure shift decoys around so this is a homemade we call them like H weights or whatever this is obviously not an H um I use bought use homemade this one, you can see where I added quite a bit more lead into it, which makes them stronger and heavier. And uh, this is, if you end up hunting on the coast, you need something like this, probably 12 ounce minimum. But I like to run one pound to a little more uh, per decoy. And you can run more than one decoy, 
off of one weight. You know, you can put two or three. It gets to be hard to put them out, but you can do that. And you get some good action with the other ones behind that lead bird. But um, if you don't have that, then somebody local will be hunting over your decoys next year because they'll be washed away. But the tip I wanted to show was how to attach them. Because I don't keep a weight on every decoy all the time. And man, it is nice to have a decent sized loop on the end of your line. So when I know I'm gonna need some different decoys for a hunt or whatever, feed your loop through. And I'm hunting. It really doesn't matter what notch you use there. I usually do a perfection loop. If you want to know how to tie that, look it up. It's a good one, it's fast. But that'll stay. And I can use that same weight on anything. So that's what I was I wanted to show you. And one other little detail. You see I got numbers here. 39, 48. This is also the table I use for making up droppers for uh, long lines or for uh, for making Texas rigs these are these are actually some I found on sale but so I have that table mark So I very easily can pull my line. Then I have, I hadn't, I hadn't been using it lately. You can see it's collecting some stuff. There's some main line. So uh, having your little station set up. So I clean this thing off and I can pull them to where I need them. So that each one of my droppers, as you can see, each one of my droppers or the same. So anyway, theory being with being able to swap your weights and making plenty of droppers is look realistically, lead costs a lot. I really don't want to have a weight on every one of these decoys. So I trade them around, but you know, I like to be able to, I like to be able to put out a hundred if I need to. Usually it'd be more like 60 or 80 singles and then we can put out gang rigs. And one other thing I wanted to touch before I wrap this thing up and uh, I'm just kind of giving a quick overview of some topics right down here, jerk string. I can show you how I got that rigged up if you want me to. So just comment and say, yeah, I want to see it. There's more weights. You can talk about pouring weights if you want. This and that bad boy needs to be fixed. But this is uh, some canvas backs I made. Whoo, whoo, I don't know. 15 years ago, burlap wrap. I got a hankering to try and make another set. I, I got got carried away with other things and then and don't beat me up I know these are drakes and they got hen eyes in them but I bought these heads um and all they had at the time were hens and I figured if a duck got close enough to see the eyes it was over anyway but had those for quite a while and I think I'm gonna make uh, another dozen maybe mallards this time something sort of like those big uh, herders, and we'll burlap wrap them. Anyway, if y'all want to see that, then I'd love to try and document that, and that could be the next one I'm adding on. You see these paints? I got some more, got some more old herders right here. I need to get new paint on. So, uh, scoters. Got some old flambeau decoys. Made them into scoters. Got a uh, miscellaneous Mitch Smith match. But uh, those bad boys will do the trick. And then 
Uh, is this one of those times you say, if you know, you know? Anyway, let me know what you want to see. Uh, if any of that strikes your fancy. I know I was happy with these, these gunning series. Mallards, thinking about getting another pack of them. Uh, they really did add a lot of realism to the to the spread on those days when a lot of wind was no current on a pond or something. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for checking in with me. Uh, come on back. You know, I'm going to be working quite a bit coming up, but uh, keep watching. I'm going to keep trying to make some videos. Let me know if any of this stuff's interesting to you. Be more than happy to go into more depth, uh, more in-depth on any of it. And uh, thanks for coming by and checking out PJ in the wild.